All right, welcome back. This video, we are going to kind of take a break away from our normal path, and we're gonna clean up some loose ends, so to speak. So in this video, we're gonna do multiple things, uh, things that I may have missed, or that I didn't have a place to put these particular things in another video. And we're also going to create the particles for when we collect the diamond. Uh, in a previous video, I said that I had planned on creating those particles and I just didn't have them made yet. And I did that. I made them and then I have been keeping track of some of these other things that I missed or haven't got to yet that I think we probably should get to before we get into other things. And we're gonna take care of all of those in this video. Let's go ahead and do something about that uh, particle system for our diamond. So as it is right now, when our player gets to the end of the level and reaches the goal, which is the diamond, we destroy the diamond, disable all the controls and send it to well, right now we're, we just restart the layer because we don't have anything else to send it to, but we will eventually send it to another layout. Double click out here in the layout and scroll down, pick a particle and insert it. And then I am going to load a file and I'm going to pick the diamond. I'll open that up and we don't have to do anything to it. I have created it on the fade layer for some reason. I am going to change that layer to the objects layer. And then I can lock and turn off my fade layer. I'm going to unlock the objects layer. So I'm going to zoom in where I can see this up close and we are going to change some properties right out of the box. That's what we have. Uh, that's just the default particle system in Construct 3. I'm going to have this as a one shot instead of continuous spray. And then I'm going to bump the rate up to 100. And then I want the spray cone to go in 360 degrees. So we're getting somewhere. Make that speed a little bit quicker. Let's go 300. And I'm going to drop the size down to 10. And we're going to do something with that. So little bit different. Uh, I want those diamond pieces pretty small, but I want them to be different sizes. I'm going to play with this grow rate and I'm actually going to go negative and I'm going to say negative 20. And you can see that they, when they shoot out, they shrink in size as they go to disappear. So I'm going to switch up the speed as well. I'm going to change the speed randomizer to 280. So now they don't all travel at the same speed. Now we can change uh, the size of them. And I am going to just do 10. It's pretty subtle. You can see some of them are uh, quite a bit bigger and some of them start out pretty tiny, but they all shrink as they go to the end of their life. Okay, down in the particle lifetime properties, I'm going to lower the acceleration. It's at negative 150. I'm going to say negative 120. And we don't need gravity. Uh, the angle randomizer is, it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, you can play around with this and definitely do what you want to do with it, but hmm. All right, I tell you what, I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to say angle randomizer to 50. And then the speed randomizer, I'm going to bump that way up to, let's say, 2,500. There we go. We got a lot of variation with our particles. I'm going to shorten how long it lasts from one second to, let's say, 0 0.7 seconds. Okay. I think that's good. I am going to take this that we have created here on our level one layout and I'm just gonna delete it oh well, actually with it selected before we delete it let's go ahead and change the name to particle underscore diamond and 
I have my caps lock turned on. So I'm going to rename that again in lowercase particle underscore diamond. And now I am going to delete it. Then I'm going to go over to our meta layout and I'm going to drag a copy of that into the layout. Let's go up to our sprites and our objects folder, or not our objects folder, I'm sorry, our particles folder. And let's slide that in there. So let's hop on over to the objects. Let's open up our diamond group. Let's go over to our sprites folder and into our objects folder. And in our object diamond, let's open that up and let's go to, this is not the particle, this is the, the diamond object. And let's go to our image point and our origin is at the bottom middle. And we want to keep that there because that helps with uh, placement and when we have snapping turned on. So I'm going to right click and choose uh, add a new image point. I want it in the middle on the x-axis. I think I'm going to go up towards maybe right about there. So I'm going to say 22 and 14. I'm going to exit out of that. That's image point one. Because you see our origin point is image point zero and this is going to be image point one. Okay, let's add an action and let's go to our sprites, objects, and our diamond object. And we're going to spawn another object and we're going to choose our new particle that we made right there, particle diamond. The layer is going to be the objects layer and the image point is going to be one, the one we just created. And I'm going to slide that all the way to the top. So that's the first thing that happens and then it gets destroyed. I'm going to go into level one. In fact, I am going to unlock my player and drag my spawn point up to the top and turn my snapping on and I'm just going to place him like right there and then I'm going to play the level and then when we collect the diamond we get a particle so uh, play around with it if you'd like and I think um, I like it I think I'm gonna go with it it might be a little uh, a little crazy I might turn the rate down we have it at 100 I wonder if we let's go to our meta select that I'm gonna turn the rate down to let's say 80 preview that not a lot of change is there okay I think that's a little more subtle and I'll go back to level one let's test that out one more time yeah all right I'm gonna just quit messing with it uh, or this is probably getting really annoying I do apologize I am going to keep that back at 100 and then I'm gonna go back to the angle randomizer and just say zero I think I might not want the angle randomizer after all. And that's what I want. I think that's better. It looks more almost like an explosion. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm going with. You do it however you want. I'm going to take our little guy, our spawn, back down to the bottom. So let's go over to our meta and we have all this stuff here. I'm going to play our meta layer and you see a lot of things going on there. Our player for one starts falling. He will be falling forever. When we created our meta layout, we created a meta event sheet. So let's bring that up. Let's add an event and I'm going to pick system on start of layout. Now, once we start, all these objects will be in the game because they are on the meta layout. So the purpose of having them on the layout will still serve its purpose, but we will no longer need them once the game initializes and starts. So 
we can destroy them. Add an action. The first thing I'm going to destroy, let's go into our meta folder and get rid of our camera. And I'm just going to type in destroy. And we will no longer need uh, an additional camera object. So some of the other things I want to destroy, uh, let's see, we have family collisions. We don't want to get rid of those. Let's create a new family. So right click on our families folder, add a family. Let's select our player death uh, and our player. Let's add both of those. Select OK, and then we'll rename it FAM underscore player. Right click, add another family, and we can pick particle death, particle diamond, and I think those are the only actual particle systems we have created so far. So let's add those. Select OK and rename it FAM underscore particles. We have our particles and our player pieces in families now. Let's go over here and add an action and let's pick our family particles. Type in destroy and then add another action and pick our fam player and say destroy. Okay, that's what we should have on our meta event sheet. So if we go in here to our meta layer and we play it, none of that stuff exists. And actually, you could see our run text faded away. And I believe we have that set up. Yes, we do. We have that set up to where it destroys after it fades away. So I am going to close out of our meta sheet. And now one of the things I wanted to do was if we go over to our tiles, I'm going to close some of this up. There we go. And we go to our tile bricks and we unlock our tile map uh, bricks and we click on it. Those are our objects because I unlocked it. I'm going to actually lock everything else, just our tile map bricks. There we go. You can see one of the, uh, or couple of the items were these windows right here and we have not used those yet. So I'm going to insert some of these and kind of show you what the design idea is here. So with my pencil tool selected I just clicked and dragged over these four squares and I'm going to zoom in down here on our first little ledge. I'm going to put one just kind of right in the middle and then maybe another one, I don't know, maybe right there. And then another one, does that look even like that? I think that'll work. I'm gonna lock that, unlock my player, and I'm gonna move my player back so he's not right on that window. And unlock my objects, and I'm gonna move both of these coins over so that uh, just that it looks better. Maybe move these coins over too. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to lock these again, unlock my bricks, select, grab my pencil tool, get my window, and I'm just going to go through the level and paint some windows in places where I think it looks, uh, well, just where I think it looks good. <laughs> Well, something like that feel free to paint this up however you wish uh, one thing to keep in mind that you know these do not look like they are even with others the idea is not to imagine what it would look like on the outside but in our small viewport that we have we only see you know this general area right here and when we move we will only see you know this general area when we get to this part and when we jump up here we're only going to see this area. So each time we move across a screen or jump to a new ledge, our viewport is entering a new area. So there's not really a way for the player's eyes and mind to uh, look at this and say, hey, those windows don't match up. We're just kind of cheating the design so that we are able to break up the monotony of all these uh, bricks and the, the pattern that they create. I am going to lock that layer and one of the effects that we can do with this is we can add a background 
And the idea is we will be able to see the background through the windows. Again, this is one of those situations where if you're an artist and you have another idea, make your own background. With that being said, I made a very simple background and I made it so that we could put it as a tiled background and it would take up very little processing power or CPU memory. In our layers panel, I'm going to right click, add layer to the bottom, and I'm gonna name this background. And with that selected, I'm going to double click and I'm going to scroll down to tiled background. Let's insert that and we want to load a file and we can go to our folders and go to our tiles and then tile level background. It's that little purple diamond looking thing. Let's open that up. Looks good. Let's exit out of that and let's rename this tile underscore background. So with our snapping turned on, the diamond is 64 by 64, but we can stretch it out to cover whatever we want. But what I am going to do is, you can see our layout here is this outer darker gray line. So if we put our tiled background in the far corner, that should give us enough room on either side because we are going to parallax this. So we need a little extra buffer space. So let's line it up and stretch it out and make sure that we have enough area around where our level is painted. And you can just kind of eyeball this. You can make it as big as you want, really. Let's go in and let, actually, let's just go play it. So there's our background. It shows through our windows. I know it's not the best background, but it gives us something to work with. I'm going to exit out and I'm going to go to our, in our layers panel. I'm going to click on background and that's going to bring up the layer properties. Come down here to our scale rate and parallax. Now scale rate is going to stay 100% because that's going to scale with our camera. But our X and our Y, I'm going to drop down to 80% on both of those. If we go back into our level and play it, we can already see that it's parallaxing. It moves at a different speed than our camera does. It separates our foreground, which is our castle, our bricks, and our level layout. It separates that from the background. But it gives dimension and, and depth to your game. I'm going to go ahead and lock that. And actually, I don't need to see that while I'm editing, so I'm going to turn mine off. You can leave yours on if you wish. In the next video, we will get back on track and start on uh, making menus. All right, that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one. And as always, don't forget to save.